We were once indistinguishable from the rest of the animal kingdom. A small group of hairy, bipedal apes with no long-term goals besides surviving to see the next day. But as time passed, we had progressed like no other creature before us, harnessing fire, creating tools, and eventually entire cocoons of human life, working in our complex social groups to achieve what no other animal could. Over the last century, the amount of humans living in cities went from under 50% to nearly 90% in developed countries such as the UK. This means that cities and city life is an extremely important part of our lives already, and tailoring this city life to suit our needs will be the only way to keep them sustainable in the future. Cities may become multi-layered, stacking roads and walkways on top of each other as a counter to overpopulation. And we could be building entire floating cities away from land. If we go down the dystopian path, our cities may just end up like larger and more cluttered modern day cities with a mess of skyscrapers climbing higher and higher than the others. Assuming our future edges on the utopian side of things, our cities will be a canvas of green and white, with good looking buildings and not the concrete eyesores we see being used today. These buildings may sustain their own ecosystem, with plant life being allowed to grow on and around these buildings. This would allow people in a city to breathe in cleaner air and just feel better overall. Let's look at Dubai here as an example of a modern day utopian city. I almost can't believe that this and cities such as Singapore actually exist, uh, because this is what peak human progress and capitalism looks like today. It almost looks like an animation of a utopian city and I think it's stunning, and would love to see a future that looks like a crazier version of this. And sure, these are just a few specific places around the world, but we are getting there, slowly but surely. There are many naysayers and people that are anti-progress, but thinking back in time, there are always people opposed to new technology. People were once against the concept of cars, and now look, our world is filled with them, and life without them would be unimaginable. People used to think heavier than air flight was impossible, and we all know how that turned out. No matter what generation you are in, there will always be people opposed to human progress because they are scared of the unknown. Some say that human beings are being phased out by AI and that we are losing our greatest weapon, our intelligence. This may not be true, but it is undeniable that AI has already beaten humans at a multitude of tasks and has overtaken humans in things that were once thought to be our territory only. AI doesn't get worse, it only gets better, and at an increasing rate too. So what can we do to compete with AI? We can look to the past for the answer. Neanderthals and humans used to exist alongside each other. Homo neanderthalis were much larger and stronger than Homo sapiens. Their intelligence was also on par, if not superior, to humans. So since humans couldn't directly compete with the superior Neanderthals, some simply interbred with them. Something that remains evident in our modern day DNA. This fusion of two different and yet intelligent creatures led to the humans we are today. This could also be our answer to the AI problem. We may simply have to fuse with the AI. This might sound far fetched now, but it is the only evident pathway for humanity to take so far and fusing our minds with complex computers may even allow us to become immortal, having our consciousness transferred or downloaded onto servers. If this sounds far-fetched now, imagine what people just 500 years ago would say if you told them about the modern world. They'd call you insane. We must therefore assume that if we continue to progress at a constant or increasing rate, then we will reach such crazy heights of technology very, very soon. You may be wondering why there's been a disappointing lack of things such as flying cars or supersonic passenger aircraft in this last decade. 
The answer is that these things will probably never happen. Not because they can't be done. Because there's been flying cars and supersonic aircraft in the past. But because they're impractical and just pointless ideas. In terms of transport, fuel efficiency and safety have been prioritized over all else. So, what can we expect for the future of transportation then? Will it just continue to get slightly safer and more efficient? Well, maybe. There is a chance, of course, that we might see something even better than supersonic travel in our lifetime. Civilian spacecraft, which would transport people around the world at hypersonic speeds, going from London to New York in less than an hour. That's basically the same as a drive to the airport. Maybe. Uh, but this could only happen if space travel becomes extremely safe, of course. And whilst flying cars may never be a thing, uh, at least by name, there may be small automated hovercraft and driverless cars that will be used for everyday commute. These hovercraft may be able to access different layers of a futuristic city or get to the top of the highest of skyscrapers within minutes. And companies such as Tesla are already making the driverless car dream come true with a few imperfections, of course. Now, maglev trains would also become cheaper and more common in the future. Maglev stands for Magnetic Levitation, and some of you might know this, but they do exist nowadays. And yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool trains. They travel at absolutely fascinating speeds for a ground vehicle. Think of the top speed of a Bugatti Chiron but constantly, never running out of fuel, just a constant, smooth 400 kilometers an hour. And they exist in countries such as China and Japan, but they have very, very limited rail networks, and they've definitely not achieved their full potential as their routes are limited. Now, a system of maglevs around the world would mean that you can travel at speeds that compete with modern day air travel, as they can reach 300 miles an hour nowadays. Uh, that means you could hop on a train and get from London to Paris in under an hour, which is insane. And it doesn't have the same wait times as traveling on a plane does. Uh, remember with a plane, whilst planes are slightly faster by a few hundred miles an hour, there is a lot of waiting to be done when going through security or getting your baggage checked in. Another new sector of future transportation may also be dedicated to interplanetary travel. So going to the moon in the future could be the same as a holiday to Thailand. If we manage to get the cost of space travel down, of course, this won't be easy. But a few creative ideas have popped up, including an idea that has been featured on the YouTube channel Kurzgesagt, or in a nutshell. And this features basically giant spinning hooks in space that will latch on the spacecraft and fling them into deep space, saving a lot of money. It sounds like a simple idea. It sounds cartoonish, almost, but there's no reason for it not to work. It doesn't break any laws of physics, and it's well within what we can create or build. Well then, thanks for watching the video, and don't forget to subscribe. You better subscribe. Subscribe.